Okay, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to go through now and we're going to demonstrate how we deploy our image builder, how we connect to it, how we install some settings on the machine, and then how we seal that and shut that image down. So let's begin. I'll just close some of these other tabs we don't need. So the link's taken us straight into our AWS console. Um, if you haven't got the link, obviously we, we would click and we would log into our AWS console normally. We would make sure we're in the island region and we'd look for the AWS service app stream, app stream. Here it is as the first option. I'm going to click that and here we are in app stream. So I'm going to browse down on the left here to images and I'm going to click on image builder. Now from the image builder, there is only one option now and that's to launch an image builder. So let's go ahead and do that. I could choose a series of default images that are provided by AWS. In this instance, I'm only interested in public images because I haven't created any private images yet. And I'm going to select the instance family that I want to deploy to. It's very important you kind of, you remember what your instance family is you've created for because these images will have things embedded in them to be able to support the graphics uh, desktops or the memory optimized desktops, those sort of things. So I always make sure that the image I've created clearly states what it was created for as in general purpose or with the, whether it was a graphics desktop. Um, it will also give you that instance or that information within the here within the uh, when you when you're looking at the images to choose. So don't worry if you don't get your naming convention right. But I do try and put that in the names of the images when I create them just so I don't forget or get them confused. At this stage, I'm going to choose the general purpose image. There's only two that are publicly available from AWS and I'm just going to select the latest version and I'm going to click next. I'm going to give it a name of APS for AppStream underscore image builder underscore general purpose underscore demo one. That's a really ugly name, but the users shouldn't ever see this name. This is purely just for administrators. And I'm going to spin up a general purpose standard or a stream standard medium instance with two vCPUs and four gig of RAM. So happy with the image instance type. I'm going to click next. If you don't click the default internet access, your instance when it's spun up will not be assigned an elastic IP address. So if you're certain that you're going to spin your image builder up into a network that already has internet access, don't worry about this option. Or you may want to be controlling the image builder or the image builder's access to the internet. So you may be selecting it in the, or to, to launch it into a particular VPC where you know you are controlling the internet like through a NAT gateway or through a proxy or, or some other mechanism. Here however because I only have the default VPC, the default subnet and the default security group I'm literally going to click on the default internet access as well. Whoops I need to change this back. And that means that the machine will boot up into this default VPC with an IP address of 10.0.0. something within the slash 24 here of the subnet and it will give me a elastic IP address to this instance to be able to go out to the internet and get internet access for this machine to download things to connect to Google etc. Um, you'll note at this point as well we've got our option or our ability to choose an Active Directory domain to connect to. We currently don't have a configuration for that. There is a video later in the advanced section of this course on how we go about doing that and how we go about joining our instances to the domain. It's worth knowing that you don't need to join your image builder to the domain even if later you want your instances to be joined to the domain for domain users to log into that. Um, at this stage we're going to ignore this section though, we don't need it and I'm going to click review. Here's all the basic instances or the basic settings of what we're, cre uh, what we're creating for our image builder and we're going to click launch. It's also worth noting though that the information that AWS give you is they say you are charged for an image builder instance while it's running even if no one is connected. So you need to make sure that you get in there quick, install what you need and then shut the image down. So let's proceed. I'm going to click the launch button. It says it's been created successfully. We're going to wait for it to boot. At the moment, we can see it's currently pending. I'll pause the video while we wait for that. And as soon as we see that status change to running, we can proceed. OK, welcome back. So our image builder uh, is now in a status of running. So we're going to select the image builder and we're going to click the connect button. We'll wait for this to log me in. 
Now you'll note that there's two tabs at the top already. The first one is the local user, which gives us the options to log in as the administrator and install our apps. We can log in as a template user and effectively edit the default user settings on the image. And we can log in as a test user and see what the users will see when they log into a streaming instance. So we can also click on the tab here for other user. And this is what we would use if the machine was domain joined. At this point, though, I'm going to check local user and tick administrator. And we're going to log in now to this instance as the administrator. You note there is no username or password. This is automatically done by AppStream, automatically managed by AppStream for us. <coughs> okay, so we're now on our Windows Server 2012 R2 AWS AppStream 2.0 image builder. And at this point, any change, changes we make to this image are live. Um, you may only be applying it to your administrator. You may apply it to the entire session or settings for the overall server. It really depends on the settings that you're changing. At this point, however, I, the first thing I want to do is turn off Internet Explorer Enhanced Security. Um, now, that's not a recommendation or something that you would do in production. It's just in this instance, it's to facilitate a simple and easy uh, transition to to it, internet services to download things that sort of stuff because you'll note when I open Internet Explorer on this machine it says it's enabled and if I try to go to many websites I'm going to get prompted that uh, it's not added to trusted sites and those sort of things um, I'm going to click on the server manager I'm going to go to the local server option in the server manager and I'm just going to disable IE enhanced security obviously I don't recommend you do that in production but in this instance for a demonstration that's why I'm doing it I'm going to click OK. I'm happy with that. I'm going to close the server manager. I'm going to close Internet Explorer again. And this time when we open it, it should see that it's not enabled. And if we go www.google.com, you can see we're out on the internet and we're not getting prompted for any issues or adding the sites to trusted sites, etc. So now that we've disabled Internet Explorer Enhanced Security, the next thing we want to do is go and download WinZip. Now, there's a lot of new versions of WinZip. Um, a lot of them have ads, a lot of them have lots of different GUIs and lots of different pretty features on them which are totally unnecessary. So, what I prefer to do is actually install an older version of WinZip. I'm not suggesting you do that in production, I'm just doing that in this instance because I know it's a product that actually works. Um, so, if we go now and open Internet Explorer, I'm simply going to cut and paste the link to a website called oldversion.com and I can get a older version of WinZip. I'm going to download WinZip version 10 and not the version 22 that's currently out there, um, which means that I don't really have to worry about this product trying to connect to the internet or ads or any of those sort of things as part of my image. And on this page, I'm going to browse over the download now option. You'll note as the URL that shows in the bottom left there is it's still on oldversion.com and not this link here, which is an ad. So I'm going to click on download now and I'm going to wait for the download to start. At this point, I'm just going to save this install into the downloads directory. I'm going to save WinZip there. The download's completed, and I'm just going to simply click Run now and close Internet Explorer. We're going to walk through the setup for WinZip 10. I'm going to click OK. I'm not going to install this garbage. I'm going to click Continue. I'm going to click next to the install wizard. I'm going to accept the license agreement and warranty. I'm going to click next again. I'm going to stay with the start for WinZip Classic. That's fine. Literally going to keep clicking next, 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 next until we can get out of this setup and have it installed for all users. You'll note it says it's an evaluation version. That's fine. I don't have a code or haven't bought WinZip. Happy that that's installed now. So we're going to go away and close that. So now that we've installed WinZip and we're happy with that configuration, the final step in this process is basically to publish a, the applications via the image assistant. And that exposes the applications from this image to the users. So it gives them the option of the streaming apps that they're allowed to run, as opposed to them just logging into a desktop and running whatever they felt like. So we're going to click on the add application here. I'm going to browse firstly for Internet Explorer, which I know is in program files x86. Internet Explorer, and I'm going to publish the, the shortcut iExplore.exe. I'm going to open that. I'll change the display name, and this is what the users will see, to Internet Explorer. Um, 
You can also add launch parameters here. For example, if I wanted to open a default web page, I could put www.google.com or we could put microsoft.com or we could also put mastersof.cloud as the launch parameters for so this would mean that when people go to launch this application it will open Internet Explorer and will open a tab to this web page so happy with that we're going to save that as the first option and then we'll go and add the next option which is WinZip we can cheat a little bit in this instance I'm going to go to the properties of the shortcut on the desktop I'm going to cut and paste the target link here which takes me to the full path of the executable and we can add that here. I'm going to control V that into the file name, take the quotes out and click open. And you can see it's found it and it's added the shortcut there. I'm going to put win zip, win zip as the display name for the users. I'm not fussed about the actual name, which is an internal database thing for the image assistant. Happy that they're available, that's great. We could also then publish anything else we've got on the image now. So long as the executable's on the machine, we could publish Firefox or we could publish Calculator, all those sort of things. Happy that they're as they are, I'm going to click Next. Now at this point, we can connect and run to the machine and run this as a template user, which means any of the settings we change, we're going to edit the default user profile. Um, I don't have any changes that we want to make to that, so we're going to leave that as it is. I'm simply going to click Next to the test instead and here we could switch from this user to the test user and basically we emulate the experience of logging into this image as if we're a streaming user so let's click switch user I'm going to select the test user and and at this point I can see what the users will see when they go and open WinZip so when they open WinZip they will they won't actually get the desktop experience, but their application will look like this. I'm not going to enter a registration code. They will they will see all of this, so they need to click Use Evaluation Version, and WinZip should just open. So we know that the application is there. It is running in eval mode, but we don't really care about this for the demo. That's fine. Happy with that. We know that WinZip's okay, so I'm just going to go back to Switch User. And I go back to my administrator session. I'm happy that this configuration is complete for this image, so we're going to click Next. And the final section here is that the apps are going to be optimized to reduce their launch time um, by the image assistant. So at this point, we simply click Launch, and it will cycle through all of the apps that we published and made available in, in this image assistant. There's only two that it will launch. I'm going to click Launch. It will open Internet Explorer. We'll wait for the page to load. I'm happy that that's loaded com completely and successfully. I'm going to click continue for the next page. And there's WinZip. And I'm going to say, or click continue, because those have both launched happily and successfully. We can now put a name for the image. So I'm going to put APS underscore IB for image builder. Actually, we're not going to put image builder. We'll just put this as AppStream. We'll call this a general purpose image. And we'll call this demo one. The display name it doesn't matter. The users aren't really going to see that so I'm going to make it the same there. If you use the latest version of the agent when the image is updated or changed or anything else is added to it, it will automatically get the latest version of the agent from AWS. You can untick this so that that makes the image static so that you won't automatically get uh, the AppStream agent updated in the image. So it depends on, on how you what your change process is and how you feel about it. If, you, if there's a lot of significant changes to this image and you never want the agent to be updated because that's how it was tested, then untick this. If you're happy that it, it should always use the latest version, which means your images are a lot less maintenance and updating, then, then tick the option and continue. I'm happy to always use the latest version because we're going to have to be testing with that anyway. This is cloud. It's always going to be a new version around the corner, so we might as well try and use the latest as quickly as we can. Cool. So now when we click disconnect and create, the image will disconnect me, it will take a snapshot, and then it will shut down ready for fleet deployment. Let's go and do that. I'm clicking disconnect and create image. Shortly my session will terminate. You'll get this message here which says you've been disconnected. We know we've been disconnected. We did that on purpose. I'm going to close my streaming session now. And if we do a refresh here of the page, you will see this change to snapshotting. 
This can take anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes, so I'm going to leave this loading and snapshotting, and when that's ready to deploy, I will show you what that looks like. So I'll just pause the video briefly. Worth noting that whilst we're waiting for the image builder to finish its snapshot, and you'll see here it's still snapshotting, if we click on the image registry, we'll see the image with our, our private image name, and you'll see that the status of the creation of that is pending, and the owner is my account. So we're waiting for that to, to complete, and I will pause the video until that has completed snapshotting. So finally now we can see that the image builder snapshot or well, status has gone from snapshotting to stopped. And if we click on the image registry option here, or the tab here, you'll see that this image is now available. And what we can do is we can now create a fleet based on this image and deploy that out to many multiple instances in that fleet. Uh, we'll do that in the next series of videos, so guys stay tuned for that. Any questions, do please let us know, send us an email, send us a Twitter. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much. Bye now.